In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this beautiful opportunity that you have given each one of us. We thank you, Lord, for those people gathered here and those who are listening to this recording on YouTube. Your spirit is ministering to us personally, guiding us how to go about so many things in our life. Holy Spirit, take complete authority of this entire Zoom session. Take complete authority of my mind and my vocal cords so that let every word that is spoken over here be of yours and nothing of mine, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so today let's go to John chapter 12, verse 24. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So this verse says, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone, just one grain, never more. But if it dies, it produces much grain and yields a harvest. Okay? So this verse, you know, it is, it just brought into my imagination. Okay? So imagine there's a farmer who has a, a paddy field. And say, you know, there are many grains in one kernel. So over there, that grain is very comfortable. Along with that grain, there are many other grains. But imagine if that grain had to fall down. It is separated from where it is originally placed. Okay? And it has to die. When it falls onto the earth, it dies. So this just, you know, uh, like my mind just stopped at this. Like many times it happens like that. We are very comfortable in a place where we are. And we don't want to move from that place. Many a times Holy Spirit guides us, tells us to do things which are out of our comfort zone. But because we are used to comfort, we want to be there. But unless we fall, as in we prioritize God above ourselves and die to ourselves, we are never going to bear fruit in our lives. That's what this says, right? It remains alone. Just one grain, never more. But if it dies, it produces much grain and yields a harvest. That's what God is calling each one of us to do in our lives. He is calling us to prioritize his word, his will for our life, so that we learn to be fruitful. Thank you, Jesus. So going back to, you know, my life before I came into the word of God, I was a person, I would like to, you know, be very, I was very ambitious and I would like to um, get better with things. Like I would want to excel at my work, which is not a bad thing, but I had that competitive, uh, you know, thing about myself. Thank you, Jesus. So I always wanted to put myself, be the best, be very ambitious, prioritize myself over anything. Okay. And when I came to the Lord, there was this one verse that really spoke to me. I'll just go to that. That is James chapter 3. Yeah. 
Thank you, Jesus. This says, for where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder, unrest, rebellion, and every evil thing and morally degrading practice. So in one of the translations, it says there is every evil work and disorder. Okay. And I'll tell you how this verse spoke to me. Holy Spirit told me, he's like, Priya, you're a medical doctor. And I was like, yeah, what is disorder? Something that is not in order. Whenever we had, um, you know, to study about any particular disease, we would start the definition with, it is a medical disorder. When things are not functioning in my body normally, it is a disorder. And Holy Spirit gave me a very uh, beautiful revelation, which I'd like to share with each one of your listening. It's, he said, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder. So he showed me the life of many people who are very successful in this world. They have everything. They have the property, they have wealth, name it. You name it, they have everything. But along with that, they have something free. What is it? Disorder. Some people don't get sleep in the night. Some people have so many lifestyle disorders that we talk about. And that's when I realized, even though the symptom shows like a medical disorder, the root is spiritual. When there is self-centeredness, where there is selfishness, where there is jealousy, you can't see people around you progress. You don't want them to grow. You only want to put yourself above. There, nothing can be in order. Everything is in disorder. And that really spoke to me. Because still that point, I used to always think of you know myself. Even though I had come into the word, my idea was like, how I'm going to use this scripture to get benefited, how I'm going to use this scripture to excel in my studies, how I'm going to use this scripture to get this in my life and that in my life. Many a times we do that, right? We make it like a bargain deal with God. God, I want to do this. Then I know you'll be pleased and you'll give me this. So that is where, you know, this particular scripture really spoke to me. And that's where I realized that, you know, I'm wrong. If I'm prioritizing myself, what the world calls is, you know, being smart, being ambitious, that is not pleasing in the eyes of God. Because the wisdom from above is pure. It's spiritually undefiled, peace-loving, gentle, reasonable, full of compassion and good fruits. See, we are bearing fruits, okay? Either we are bearing good fruits or we are bearing bad fruits. Fruits according to the kingdom of God or fruits according to the kingdom of darkness. But we are producing fruits. So today, each one of us needs to ask this question. What fruit am I bearing? Is this what God wants me to do? Or is this something that is coming from my own selfish ambition? In my workplace, am I going there to get benefited for myself? Or am I going there to bless other people? In my family, am I only seeing my comfort or am I considerate to my family members? Because as human beings, because of the sin nature, by default, you know, we want to prioritize ourselves. And I'll give you an example. You know, say for example, a six month old child, okay? 
the mother leaves the child on the chair and picks up another baby what happens to the child the child immediately starts crying did someone teach the child to cry no it came naturally that's how we are in the flesh our flesh is so bad that it can only think about its profit and if i live in the flesh i can never see the favor of god in my life i can never see the goodness of god in my life i can never allow god's will to operate in my life not because god doesn't love me god loves me unconditionally but he also gives me choices every minute we have choices and whatever choice we make that decides our future and that's where i realized if i really want to be a disciple of jesus i really have to learn to die to my flesh i really have to learn to be submissive to the voice of the holy spirit thank you jesus would anyone like to add something here thank you jesus Thank you. Uh, Hello, Sister Priya. Yes, Sister. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I just missed the little part, the, the starting part, but I know you're speaking on that scripture where if there is jealousy, then I am at unrest. It's that part, no? You had highlighted that part, no? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, to add, means I would say the minute I am in jealousy, all my other... uh you know what to say like my other feelings or my emotions or even my thinking gets hampered and i can't think straight i just can't think straight that that one spirit of jealousy keeps bringing that thought again and again and uh, everything else is like i'm seeing through the lens of jealousy so whatever happens whatever action a person has done uh because that person is uh, like you know because i'm jealous of him i can see everything okay this he did because of that or this she did because of that so it's like my mind only gets prejudiced yes absolutely and yeah. self centeredness and jealousy are interconnected why because okay. my focus is that what about me what exactly. about my yes, benefit yes. yeah because i'm focused on myself so hmm. focused on my needs that i'm not able to see the goodness of god i'm not being god centered i'm being self centered yes. and because mm. of self centeredness all insecurities come now if you look yes. you know in the world there are so many insecurities exactly. anything if there is a theft if somebody is stealing somebody is killing a murder and stuff like that the root cause is insecurity why because of self centeredness really yeah so that is what jesus is telling us if you want to be my disciple you have to take up your cross daily and follow me now that doesn't mean you take a physical cross and walk on a hill that's not what jesus is telling that's what it looks like right when you read yeah. the scriptures but taking up the cross means putting yourself to death telling no to your flesh submitting to god and let me tell you one thing you know submitting to the holy spirit we can never do it on our own we can never do it on our own it is when we surrender to the holy spirit only then we can experience grace because trust me i have tried it so many times and i have failed on my own will power but when i understood grace what is grace um, god's willingness For, yes to use his ability his power all that he has on my behalf even though i don't deserve it 
excellent that's what it is grace is god's willingness to use his power on my behalf even though i don't deserve it yes. that is the love of god i don't deserve but he loves me yeah he gives his power he empowers me with the gift of holy spirit who lives in each one of us who have accepted jesus hmm. and that is when we accept we receive this gift of holy spirit we believe through our faith that is when grace gets activated in my life and faith is with actions now if i say i believe that you know god has done this but i don't there's no manifestation there's no action then that faith is dead so it goes hand in hand praise god thank you jesus and as you learn to you know obey the holy spirit in the smallest of smallest things in your life it becomes a lifestyle it's like you develop a habit initially for you to develop a habit it needs discipline right so it's the same thing every day in faith you keep putting into practice whatever holy spirit is leading you to do and that is when you start seeing god's favor in your life that is when every year you know every day every moment you start realizing your character is developing yes yes i can really see that in my life okay 5 yes. months back i was very different and 5 months now i'm very different if god has been training me he's been training me how to take authority over my emotions okay yes. Yes. he's training me how to be submissive to the voice of the holy spirit whether mm-hmm. i feel good or bad he's teaching me to obey to follow his word his instructions thank you jesus praise god so would you like to add anything more uh may not be exactly linked with this but uh, something that happened today when i was coming back from the retreat uh it's related to the holy spirit's promptings you know because i uh, was attentive to the holy spirit and uh, when the holy spirit gave me that thought i obeyed it's regarding that uh, so can i share it yes sister go ahead okay okay now while i was coming i knew that i had to fill fuel in my bike and normally i have a particular place where i go to a particular petrol pump but on the way the lord tells me like why you want to go that far and it is an out of route you go to uh, this one closer and like i'm saying lord but i don't know how to get in there so as usual how i had shared before that uh, i used to ask the lord send one angel to take me in uh, today i had not even said that but the holy spirit right enough when i reached near that area sent somebody so i said oh lord before i could even ask you knew and you sent me so now i go as i am going there there is a long queue and uh, about i would have been the 10th bike perhaps so i just stood i just got down from my bike and i was pushing the bike where i can see uh, one of the petrol pump attendant is calling that said so i'm wondering whom is calling but actually he was calling means we can go on the other side also like how when there's a buffet you can serve on one side and serve on the other side that same uh, petrol station but he is giving on the other side so when i took my bike and went i was the first one there there are 10 people standing but i became the first i said lord thank you this is your favor on me okay so now uh, i finished i came out and i am coming i have taken another shorter route and i'm coming as i'm coming uh, like i'm quite happy that the lord saved my time and i'm reaching home faster but as i reach a particular point the lord is reminding me of someone who i he wants me to go to their house and i'm saying now what is this lord because about two days back uh, that person's wife had called me and said he's not well and uh, can you just make a small prayer so now the lord is saying you are going you know so just go to that house and now there is a little you know a little uh, what to say argument in my mind a little war like thing i am god has you know taken given me extra time so that i can reach home faster and then i saying lord did you help me to become to finish that job faster so that i could go to this people house 
so then i'm about the point now whether i should take left and go home or take right to go because again it is out of my route but uh, i said no lord i will obey what you are saying so i took the right road and i'm going towards this place but i don't know that person's house exactly and neither have i carried my phone today because uh, i forgot my son was doing something when i was leaving so it remained with him now i just parked my uh, bike somewhere somewhere around that area where that person's house is and i am walking towards that lane now i said lord you have told me to go i am depending on you totally and i know that you will help me find that place also so i can't see anything so i just said lord in your name i am knocking at somebody's house it was i saw some it's a catholic house so i said okay i'll knock i knocked at the door at that door someone came and i just asked her the name of the sister so she showed me she said ah it's there a little ahead you take the next road and you'll go and she described how the house looks so now i again walked a little and went to that house and i'm knocking at the gate now nobody is coming so i said now lord see you have told me to go i don't know i couldn't even call them to know that they are at home or not but i am believing trusting on you and i've come so now nobody is opening the front gate so i went around i said maybe there'll be a window or somewhere at the side at least i'll try to knock i rarely found one window and i'm knocking again no response and right enough it started raining very heavily now what to do i had to just i had, didn't my raincoat and all was all in the bag so in the bike sorry so i just stood i found a little staircase and a little shelter and i stood there now here again i just want to share normally it would have been you no know, unrest and anger like you know i have wasted my time i've come here and now nothing is happening and i'm standing here till the rain shower gets over but just i was so calm and at peace and i'm praying in tongues and i'm blessing the houses on the left right center wherever i can see the houses around and i'm blessing this house also where i'm supposed to go and uh, now i said lord the rain is subsiding i am going back uh, i believe that you have brought me and uh, angels you are bringing somebody and keeping them out in the gallery yeah? so that when i knock at the gate they are going to open the gate for me and so i'm just like you know that faith i'm just speaking my faith and right enough the rain became a little less ah, even that place where i was standing you know i could see that there was water you know spring that like it's raining fine i'm under some shelter but that uh, i don't know how to say the spray of the rain is coming all around but not on me i'm um, only the place where i'm standing is fine the two three steps above me are getting wet below me are getting wet at the side are getting wet but only i am dry so again i could see like god's favor and then i uh, going now i just knocked at the gate right enough there is somebody one uncle is there now i don't even know who he is i just know i I've, i've gone to meet that sister so then i just asked i said hello good evening uh, is this the sister's house and then he said yeah uh, but she's not at home now i'm thinking should i go or not go but then i said i just said uncle i am so and so that day auntie had called me and she had told me to make a small prayer for you how are you i am better come he said you know and then i went in and then i started whatever just i went to like see about him how he is he but uh, definitely since i was pretty filled with the word of god at the retreat i said let me start and then i was depending on the holy spirit so i just went on and on but there was so much that he had to tell and i said uncle the lord has really brought me and when i wish he was not there so he had something to share which he said perhaps if she was there i wouldn't have been able to share so i was so happy that i obeyed the instruction of the holy spirit and he took care and then they say how you got the house then i told him i said the lord brought me uncle i really don't know and then come again visit us sometimes you know and even i felt so good so just this is my little sharing sister yeah praise god now i'll relate it to the teaching it's a beautiful okay. testimony <laughs> praise god yes yes so, yeah uh, in the beginning i had started with this verse no unless a grain of wheat falls onto the ground and dies huh. okay. it cannot bear fruit okay oh okay okay now, i missed that first part yeah so sister you know you had time okay and yes. you could have reached at home and you could have begin your you know the yes. house my work at home yeah your exactly. work at home and you could have rested yeah. but yes. it was like to put your time you know after a yes. long day it's not easy yes. in I the know, flesh I it know. is not at all easy, easy but you yeah. made a decision to go there and yes. you know so the love yeah. the seed of love with the time that exactly. you had exactly and praise god yes. see such a yes. beautiful testimony came out now i yeah, i was so thing. happy because yeah really happy for that person no he was really going through such a struggle internally and he said like i can't even open my mouth 
so i could see like what is he going through that internal torture so i have already given him like you know whatever he can do silently without showing any difference even as he was speaking no sister the the wife entered i could see the change on his face but i immediately bound that spirit of fear that gotten and i told him don't worry brother even if she has been there outside the blood of jesus is on her ears and even if something she felt like she could hear she won't remember anything that she has heard it's gone so don't worry you be at peace you know immediately there was a smile on his face i was really at peace i really i mean i was inside i was like happy as a dot thank you so much so joyful that you helped me uh, to you know go there and uh, this uncle is at peace now praise god thank you jesus <laughs> thank you so i also want to tell something so i had not actually planned to take a session today okay but it's so god i was uh, very um, like you know busy with the the things of you know my work and stuff of that okay. so okay. Okay. i had uh, thought i'd not take sessions but sister when you approached me in the evening you know ha uh-huh. yes it was yes. not you but holy spirit through holy you holy spirit yeah told yes. me that you yes. know yes. just take a session and i was like i am not prepared i don't know what to teach and trust me until i started the session just two minutes mm-hmm. before that he put the scripture in my mind you know he oh, led me God. to john 12 24 and mm. so say you don't even know what i have thought and your testimony was related to this <laughs> about Praise dying God. to self yes, yes yes and that's where i realized you know being sensitive to the instructions of god is so important because that right now we are we are sharing this yes yes but tomorrow maybe somebody who listens to this recording at a later time needs to hear this and we don't know how it's going to bless people yes so thank yes. god really praise god thank you jesus thank that's you, what jesus. i'd like to share uh, yes praise god um anybody else would like to add something praise god thank you jesus okay if there is nothing to add then we can close for today uh, sister rochelle would you like to make the closing prayer uh, lord jesus i thank you and praise you what is desire that you have put in our heart lord jesus i have this desire that i want to share how much i feel blessed for having given that little time and i said lord where where can i share it so i i uh, wish i could uh, have today sister priya's class and then uh, she will preach something and i will add something and it will help others also so i just put this message lord and i know that uh, it was you it was you who were planning this whole thing lord right from the time i was coming from the retreat going there and uh, coming home sending the message lord jesus i thank you that you are working together for the good that scripture that says god works all things together for good for those who love him and are called according to your purpose lord jesus i believe that you have a plan for always for our welfare and prosperity and never for our destruction somebody needs to hear it somebody needs to get uh, enriched and nourished with what is being shared and that is how you you plan everything and put it together thank you holy spirit thank you jesus for the love that you have put in our hearts thank you holy spirit for the power that you have uh, filled us with and the spirit of boldness power love and sound mind lord jesus we are able to discern between uh, worldly decisions and godly decisions though it looks like i need to be back with my family but lord you you help me to um, choose the right thing when i had when i reached that point lord you help me that lord jesus i know that as we hear as this, as any of my brothers and sisters hear this teaching you will help them to to take the right decisions and be sensitive to your word lord jesus thank you for your love abba father thank you for abundant love in our hearts and holy spirit you are always there with us oh we we pray the same anointing on all our brothers and sisters that they may take you holy spirit as their very close friend comforter counselor and guide i make this prayer through jesus christ our lord amen amen beautiful prayer sister thank you thank, thank you jesus god
Yes, it is. Okay. So we'll end today's session. Thank you all for joining in. See you all next time. Bye. Yeah. Bye, sister. <laughs>